In the first video in this series, I showed you five free software that you can use on your computer. With all of the bad software out there, I like to give credit to those creating software the right way. So I came up with another five programs that are actually great. They're powerful and free of viruses and malware. To qualify for this list, these free of cost programs must fall into the categories of either free software, freeware, open source, or freemium. Most of the software I show you today is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux operating systems, and they're not really in any particular order, but I'll count them down anyways, just for fun. So let's get started. Number five, CCleaner. As your computer gets older, it collects unused files and settings that take up hard drive space, making your computer slower and slower. CCleaner cleans up these files and clears out your registry to make sure your computer runs more stable. Here's how it works. When you open up CCleaner, you have the option here in the left pane for cleaner with two tabs, one for Windows and one for applications. You just select the options you want to clean from both of these tabs. When you're ready, select Analyze. It may take several minutes for it to complete its analysis. Once that's done, select Run Cleaner. Also in the left pane, you have the option for Registry. I usually leave these on the defaults. When done, select Scan for Issues. If there are any issues when done scanning, select Fix Selected Issues here in the far right-hand corner. There is a Pro version with added features, but for most, the free version will be all that they need. CCleaner is available on Windows and Mac. For you Linux users, a good alternative is BleachBit. Number four, Plex. This is one of my personal favorites, and it's really useful when streaming media from your computer to a device like a Roku, smart TV, gaming console, smartphone, or any other device that has the Plex app available, which is nearly any streaming device that has ever been made. Setup is easy. There are tutorials all over the internet. Once installed, when you've added your media into the corresponding folders on your computer, they show up in this nice looking, easy to use interface. I have different categories, which include movies, TV shows, and music. Once we've watched the TV show or movie, I usually remove the program from the corresponding folder. Most people don't do it this way. They usually leave the programs on their computer. You can even edit the data you can change the general information, tags. You can even change the poster if you want to. They do offer a premium version called Plex Pass if you require additional features like recording TV for free over the air. For me, all I've ever needed is the free version. Plex is available on Windows, Linux, Mac, and on several NAS devices, including QNAP. Number three, brackets. Most of you on Windows are familiar with the great code editor Notepad++, which is only available on Windows. Brackets is very similar and is available for cross-platform download on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Brackets is an open source editor that is optimized for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. For PHP, Ruby, and Python developers, you may want to look at Sublime or Atom. I'll put links to those in the description as well. When you open brackets for the first time after installing, you're greeted with an HTML-based tutorial file along with a CSS file, which is a great way to get familiar with brackets. In the left column, it lists files you're currently working on along with a folder view. In the right column, you have an extension manager and a live preview icon. When you select live preview, it opens a Chrome window showing you the current page you are working on with brackets, which is nice. If you're into web development, you may want to give Brackets a try. Number two, LibreOffice. If you're looking for a free and open source alternative to Microsoft Office, a lot of people consider LibreOffice to be the best. It can open and convert almost any legacy document from Microsoft Office. In recent testing, I discovered there was no data loss when opening documents with Microsoft Office extensions in LibreOffice. Their user interface is also greatly improved over previous versions. Here's what the LibreOffice alternatives look like. Instead of Microsoft Word, you have LibreOffice Writer. The alternative to Excel is called Calc. And the alternative to PowerPoint is Impress. If you're still using OpenOffice, 
this might be a good time to switch to LibreOffice, as most of the developers that used to work on Open are now working on Libre. It's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Number one, Blender. This software probably gets recommended the most of any software in the comments on this channel. Blender is an open source graphics software for creating 3D printed models, animated films, visual effects, and so much more. After using Blender for only a couple weeks, I have to admit this software is so awesome, it's hard to believe it is free. It's not the easiest software to use, and you may look at the user interface the first time and be overwhelmed, like I was. Thankfully, they have created some really useful tutorials to get you started. Before downloading Blender, I would suggest going on their site and taking a look at some of the projects that have been created with Blender. Some of them are simply incredible. Blender is available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. That concludes this list. All links are in the description of this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of this free software and what programs you think are great that you would like to see in future videos. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. And if you haven't done so already, click on that subscribe button to stay up to date with the latest software and other tech-related stuff from Tech Gumbo.